If you're in a 3v5 or a 2v5, there's one crucial step most players miss, keeping track of your teammates. If you're in any clutch situation with a teammate, do not make it a 1v5. It doesn't just have to be in clutch situations. If your teammates are all playing on site, roam to fill in the gaps. A good example of this is when you're playing master slash office on chalet. If you have one teammate playing half wall, one teammate playing solar, and one teammate playing master. And let's just say the last one died doing a spawn peek or something like that. If you know that your teammates are in these positions right here, where should you play? Well, out of all of your teammates, there's one gap in your defense. No one is covering library side. You could play this hallway, you could play in library itself, you could roam downstairs and flank up library stairs late in the round, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have one person at least attempting to contest this map control, then it's better than just sitting in sight holding the same angles as your teammates. And it goes the same way if all all of your teammates are roaming, you know that you have to play site to fill in the gaps. Holding down map control in uncontested areas is crucial to winning in solo queue, but that's just the first tip out of the 10 best tips for solo queue. And this next one plays right into the last one and it's going to be play for refrags. If you don't know what refrags are, I'm going to show you. If you have your teammate playing in lounge, peeking the double door over there, you can set up a refrag. This just means when the enemy over there swings the person holding an angle, the other one will swing out. This seems like you need more coordination than you actually do if you see your teammate holding an angle right there all you would have to do is just sit and wait for him to get shot at and then you can also swing out the reason why this works so well is because if someone peeks out and they're trying to shoot this person right here they're not going to be ready to immediately flick over and kill you over here so by the time that they even end up shooting this person over here you're already going to be peeking out and pretty much getting a free kill if you do it correctly none of you will die maybe one of you will take damage but most of the time you end up getting a free kill and it's a lot better than your teammate just dying by himself even if he does end up dying and if you don't want to die in solo queue then you need to choose the right ops your operator selection can be the difference in you going positive and carrying your team or you going negative and losing so i'm going to give you some of the best solo queue ops for defense and attack the five best attackers for solo queue in my opinion are dokabi ace ayana buck and twitch now all the operators i just named allow you to play any role you could want while still allowing you to switch it up if it's not working and moving on to the top five defenders in my opinion for solo queue it's lesion solace smoke Fenrir and Wamai. Now defense is less about operator choice but more about the strat you're running so don't take it to heart but once again these operators allow you to play any role you want and help the team at the same time. One thing I will say about operator selection is you don't want to run the wrong operators as well. In solo queue you shouldn't be running operators like Mira, Clash, or Thatcher and Monty every single round. A lot of the time it puts you in a box and it's harder to get kills if your team isn't getting kills. So try to run good solo queue ops especially on attack. The next tip I'm going to give for solo queuing is to create ghost pressure. An example of creating ghost pressure is if you're pushing gym slash bedroom on clubhouse, obviously opening up the jacuzzi wall is a good play. But if you also open up all the windows outside of site and open up the con single wall, it makes it so the defenders have to worry about much more. The defenders aren't going to know if someone is outside the windows or if someone's going to be pushing from con single wall, but they do have to worry about if someone does go to them. You don't have to necessarily push from all the stuff that you open up, but if you have an extra charge open up the con single wall or destroy one of the castles on site it makes it so in the back of the defender's head they're always worrying you can do the same thing on defense if you're defending gym slash bedroom if you open up this hole on garage like this you can get an angle right outside of site windows and the attackers are gonna have to worry about you peeking this which if they do decide to worry about you peeking it it's gonna end up wasting their time now this was just two examples on one map but you can create ghost pressure on every single map every single site as long as it doesn't hurt the team. The next thing I'm going to be going over is a bad habit I see a lot of players make and it's going to be not saving a drone in prep phase. You should either be droning the site if no one else is or saving it so you can get more information later on. A maximum of two people should be droning site at one time to gather information to see if you want to switch up your attack. But in solo queue it's much different. There's much less communication especially if you're on console. So in my opinion 80% of the time you should be saving your drone in spawn when solo queuing. It's much better than you just 
just driving it into sight because then you can't get as much information later on. And speaking of information, this next tip is one of the most overlooked things in Siege, and it's going to be gathering information. Most people obviously know that you should be gathering information, but in my opinion, people don't do it enough. You should never be going into something blind in Siege. You should always be droning or using zero cams or something like that to be able to gather information and make your strat better. This goes for both defenders and attackers. If you're on defense, at the start of the round, go onto your cameras and you can see what operators the attackers are running, where they're going to be spawning, and you can see where they're going to be pushing from. And it makes it much easier to defend when you have a good idea of the attacker's push. The same thing goes for attacking. Don't ever complicate things. Drone where you're entering from, take the map control, and if someone is stopping you from doing so, then drone their setup and make it easier to clear them. This next tip plays off the last one and it's going to be don't waste time taking map control. Don't ever complicate things. If you drone an area and no one's there, take that map control and then continue on. Drone out all the area surrounding your entry point and if it's clear, take it. If it's not, counter and clear whoever is contesting you. It's as simple as that. Don't just run in without info, but when it's free, be quick and don't waste time. And to try to get the point across better, an example of quickly taking map control is if I'm attacking CEO slash admin on Emerald Plains, I droned out archive, I drone out library, drone through hunt, and I see nobody here. What is stopping me from just walking in the building? Now, obviously you do have to be precautious. There could have been someone that just rotated through here. So, you know, you got a pre-fire or whatever, but basically this whole thing would be clear why not just quickly take it? There's no point in sitting around outside peeking these windows or whatever you would do in any other case. If you know that the area is free, then just take it. And when you're in solo queue, your teammates are going to take control of areas that you've already taken control of. So instead of your teammates just sitting outside on the windows, like I said, once you take this area, they're probably going to end up hopping in and you're going to be at a less risk of dying alone. Speaking of dying, you don't want to do that. So for the next tip, it's going to be knowing when to give up map control. This tip is mainly for defense, but basically Basically what I mean by giving up map control is if you're on a deep roam or a soft roam close to site, obviously holding map control is very important, but you have to know when to give it up. An example is if you're roaming near aviator slash study on villa, it is very easy to get trapped and killed in this area. While yes, if you can hold down this area, then go ahead and do it. But most of the time when the attackers make it up main, you should just fall back. Once you rotate out, you can take the fight from a different angle like this down 90, or you can, you know, rotate back to site. A lot of people try to do too much on a roam, especially in solo queue, and in my opinion, you should just rotate or take the fight from a different angle, because in a bad area, playing your life is better in my opinion. And with that, let's move on to the next tip, and it's going to be about repositioning. This is one of the most important tips when it comes to countering information that was gathered on you. And it's pretty simple. If someone drones you, you destroy the drone and reposition. The attackers are going to try to use the last gathered information on you to try to kill you. You don't want to give them that advice advantage. So destroy their drones and take the fight from a different angle. Repositioning also wastes more of the attacker's time. If you're on a roam and they're trying to clear you, if you keep destroying drones, moving around, and taking the fight from different angles, they're going to spend much more time on you. A good example of this is when you're roaming third floor on cafe. When roaming in this area, attackers are pretty much forced to clear you because of how many flank opportunities there are. You could flank down either of the staircases, white or red, you could drop down the hatches. You could go over and peek over the balcony on anyone that's below you. There's just many angles for you to use. So when the attackers are trying to clear you, let's just say they're droning from skylight and they opened up the red hatch. You can start at cocktail lounge. If they drone you, just shoot the drone, rotate over to piano, peek from another angle, and it's gonna make you harder to get cleared because you're just changing up your position constantly. Let's just say you shoot another drone, rotate over here, take the gunfight from this angle. Now, when you take this gunfight from this angle, they basically have no information on you and it makes it much harder for the attackers. The attackers aren't gonna have an advantage because they don't know exactly where you are. So whenever information is being gathered onto you, make sure you shoot whatever is, you know, gathering information on you and then reposition. It makes it much harder to lose a gunfight when you're on even playing field rather than the attackers having the advantage. And moving on to the next tip, it's kind of a two for one and it's going to be knowing when to play passive or when to just go for kills. There are three rules I like to follow when just going for kills. You have to have information, you need to find a gap, and you should be even or behind in man count. If you drone someone and you think you can freely kill them, go for it. Or if you see a gap in their defense and the defenders aren't contesting map control in that area, take that map control and get some free kills. And lastly, if it's a 5v3 and your team is up and 
man count, don't play super aggressive and don't play for kills. Playing dumb and going for kills is the number one way to sell a man advantage. And that's why when you do have the man advantage, you should play more passive. If you're on attack and have the man advantage, get the bomb down, play patient and play smart and then the rounds are easy. It's the same thing on defense. If you have the man advantage, don't peek as much, play off sound and information because at the end of the day, the attackers have to plan. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. And if you want to see more of my content, click the video popping up on your screen.